Hi, my name's Tim Hawthorne. I'm a druid and elder bard of Gorsev in Switrin. And today I'm going to focus on the third letter of the Behlishnian, which is Farn, the letter F. Uh, keywords here are vanguard, foundation, fate and faith. Uh, it is named after the alder tree and that brings in the concepts of power and prophecy. In English, F might seem a rather frivolous sound, suitable for the flapping of feathered wings in flight and the flourishing of fashionable frills. In Celtic languages, it becomes more valiant and wise, being variously glossed as vanguard of the warrior band, container of milk and protection of the heart. F is a fricative. We, we make it by expelling quite a lot of air from between our lips. Uh, this translates into gw in Welsh for a variety of linguistic reasons, um, which I won't go into right now. But between them, they initialise a variety of concepts. Um, so you'll probably hear this from the examples. Um, man in Irish is far. In uh, Cymraeg, it becomes gur. Uh, in C is Fec in Irish, Gwelt in Welsh. Uh, the truth is Fjord in Gaelica or Fjordinia even. Um, in Welsh that becomes Gwir. Hair is Fault, um, which is Gwallt in Cymraeg. And the word for wild is Fjain in Irish and that becomes Gwilt in Cymraeg. So, in Irish, um, under further lenition, if you ever see F followed by an H, it, it essentially disappears and isn't pronounced. Um, it mutates to V with ellipsis. In Welsh, uh, G becomes W when softened and N when it's nasalised. Um, in the Irish language, F is often considered greedy by some because it takes more grammatical changes than other letters. The colour related to this oem is crimson, which is flan in Irish or rhydgoch in Welsh. When Maeve asks the poet and prophetess Fidelum to see what will become of her army, Fidelum replies, I see it crimson, I see it red. Uh, this is because wrath and rage and red wounds are common when armies and large forces gather. The other colour which could be related to this letter is, of course, white, which is fion in Gaeliga or Gwyn in Cymraeg. In Old Irish, Finn is best translated as fair because it, it could mean white, it could mean bright, light-hued. It could also be applied to mean handsome, blessed and also just or true in a moral sense, um, very much like the English word fair is. So I'll be translating it as fair. Um, the bird related to this station is the gull, Fulorn in Irish or Gwilan in Welsh. We could also include the crow here, uh, which is Fnag in um, Scots Gaelic or Bran in Cymraeg. Um, there, there are, in Irish, the, the word for raven is Fiech Duv. Um, in Welsh, that becomes Kigvran. Um, the, the Irish also have other words for crow. The animal uh, which we can relate here is probably the wolf, although this comes from association with wildness because it's really the word for wild dog. Uh, in Irish or um, foil in Scots Gaelic. Um, Indo-European languages have some really interesting taboos when it comes to the naming of animals. The ancient name of particularly dangerous, scary or sacred animals um, sometimes isn't used through fear of taboo. So it's replaced with an epithet, which is sometimes something to do with behaviour. So in, in Irish, the wolf in modern times is generally known as Moktira, which means son of the earth, or sometimes referred to as Madra Alla, which is a, another way of saying wild dog. The skill relating to this oem um, is, the, is the general skill of poetry, um, filiocht in Irish or barthoniaith in Welsh. Um, which probably relates to the, the general association with letters here. Uh, the tool is billhook, 
um, which is related to Fidva, which I I can't really find any att- attestation for in Irish. Bilug, it would be in Welsh. The, the, the bill hook there is a little bit obscure in terms of the tool. So, looking to literature for further clues, we find Manannan's wife, Fand. Now, her name means teardrop of beauty. Uh, she appears in the Ulster Cycle in the form of an otherworldly seabird. Her encounter with Cahullan results in them briefly becoming lovers after he helps her to defeat her foes. Her mother, Flihash Folkhain, if I pronounce that correctly, um, the last bit of that means fair hair. I, I don't know what her first name means. Uh, she's described as a, a witch in the Second Battle of Moitura and is believed to have been a, a goddess of cattle and fertility. Now I'm going to come back to the witch thing in a little bit. Uh, Finula which translates as fair shoulder, the daughter of Lear, was changed into a swan and cursed to wander the lakes and rivers of Ireland with her brothers. A bit of similarity there. Uh, we've also got the similar stories. Uh, Guion Bach, who becomes Taliesin after tasting the three drops of wisdom from Keridan's cauldron. He's rescued from a weir by his first patron, Elfin Ap Gwythno, son of Gwythno Garanhir. Um, Daveney, the young buck, is similarly transformed to become the mythical hunter-warrior Fionn McCool after burning his thumb on the salmon of wisdom that he was cooking for his teacher Phineas. Fionn becomes, goes on to become the legendary final leader of the Fianna, the warrior band or standing army of the High King featured in the stories of the Fenian cycle. Welsh literature um, has some other interesting creatures, the Guragedd Anun, which are beautiful lake maidens, uh, the Gwilchgi, which, um, again, this is another formation in Welsh this time for wild dog. But this is a large black dog, literally, that haunts lonely roads. And they also talk of the Gwilchion, the wild ones, the mountain spirits resembling hags. Now, possibly the most important word for us here is uh, this word gwith, uh, which translates to few in Irish. And this is basically the word for wood. It's the word we use for the individual letters of the Bethlehem. So it's quite important. Gwith not only means wood and letters, it can also mean trees. It can mean science and magic. So we would use the term gwithon to describe anybody um, much the same way as we might use the word wizard, in fact, who was good at technical tasks beyond our understanding. Gwydion Fab Dawn is one such magician, hero and trickster of Welsh mythology. The name Gwydion could be interpreted as born of trees. It might just mean wizard, of course. In punishment for Gilvaithwy's assault on Goywin, math turns the both of them into animals as a punishment, the last transformation of that being a wolf and a she-wolf, incidentally. Amython, Gwydion's brother, steals a white roebuck and a whelp from Araun, king of the other world, leading to the card Gothai, which is the battle of the trees that got Robert Graves into so much trouble with academics. Gwydion fights alongside his brother and, assisted by Clay, enchants the elementary trees and sedges to rise up as warriors against Araun's forces. The older leads the opposing side, and Bran is the guardian on the threshold, and he can be beaten by poetry alone. So in the card Gothai, uh, Gwydion identifies his opponent with the lines, Sure hoofed is my steed, impelled by the spur, the high sprigs of Alder are on thy shield, Bran art thou called, of the glittering branches. The crow god Bran had his own magic cauldron in which the dead warriors of the day's battle were placed so they could be resurrected for the next day's fight. His head was buried under the Tower of London, watched over by ravens and guarded Britain from foreign invasion until its unearthing by King Arthur some time later. Uh, this is generally regarded as one of the three really stupid decisions that Arthur made during his reign. Bran is said to have used his body to span the River Liffey. Some accounts say the Shannon allowing his followers to cross the dangerous waters in the same way that the Dauda bridged the Boan, um, symbolic of the union between the king and the land, but it also points to the practical qualities of the wood. The older deity is Old Father Time, the fisher king of the waterways. 
This station could also possibly relate to the Bridge of Leaps, over which Cahullan must valiantly perform a salmon leap of faith in order to reach his fate in the land of Skohach. So the tree related to this station is the older. Um, Farnog is uh, its name in Irish, Guernan in Welsh, Ulnus glutinosa in Latin. It's a small water-loving tree, commonly found near streams, rivers and wetlands, holding together subsiding river banks. It blooms at spring equinox, bearing both male and female catkins. The female catkins look like tiny cones. This peasant tree is closely related to the birch and hazel, but requires flowing water to propagate its seeds, which have airtight cavities within their walls allowing them to float. It can grow 70 to 100 feet tall and can survive 150 years. Like its cousin the birch, the older is also a pioneer tree and it has a mutually beneficial relationship with nitrogen-fixing bacteria, improving the fertility of the soil in which it grows. Older is poor fuel but a favourite of charcoal burners and is often used to smoke food. Its highly water-resistant wood is used to make milk pails and other containers, things like pumps and troughs and sluices and boats and bridges, canal lock gates, and, importantly, piles for building. So places like Venice, Glastonbury Lake Village, and many European cathedrals were built on foundations of older. It was also used to make shields, clogs. It was quite a favourite thing for shoe soles, um, musical pipes, spinning wheels, cartwheels and of course furniture. Out of water, older wood turns soft, splits easily and decays rapidly. Green dye may be obtained from the flowers and yellow or crimson from the bark which bleeds red sap when it's cut, leading to the association with the colour red. It's one of the ancient trees of divination, used especially for the diagnosis of diseases and gives spiritual protection in disputes. Older bark contains tannin and, like the willow, the anti-inflammatory salicin and may have other medicinal properties. So, to sum up, this station is about founding principles and building bridges. The initiation here is about being brave enough to perform the leap of faith necessary to fly to the next part of the quest. The lesson is about loyalty and virtue, getting to the truth of the matter, and the challenge is to resist being washed away in the tide of strong emotions and ephemeral notions. Talking of founding principles, one of my founding principles is to keep putting this information out for free. So if you'd like to help support me making more videos on bardic themes, please consider joining my Patreon team or making a one-time donation. There are links for that in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe uh, using the buttons below as well and you can even click on a little bell icon if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Nothing but my song. I have nothing but my song.